Being addicted to something is terrible. You keep using the substance or whatever it is despite adverse consequences. We all have our vices. For some it's a good beer or having a quick smoke. For others it's playing an engaging retro theme puzzler. When I first bought this game, I spent hours flipping onto ceilings and platforms, dodging lies and collecting trinkets. The result was me losing track of time, and I think I was taking an ethics course in college at the time. Needless to say, a few papers on utilitarianism didn't get turned in. This is the letter V six times on the PC. The Letter V Six Times is a game that shows that graphics and high quality orchestrated music are not everything, and a stylistic choice of an 8-bit coat of paint can be extremely appealing. Gameplay, in the end, should ultimately be what defines a video game. If you have fun playing it, then that's all that matters. I personally love the graphic style of this game and it works well with the gameplay. No extra bits to get in the way of everything. And the music? The game's composer Soli knows how to lay down a chiptune track for sure. You play as Captain Viridian, who is trying to find his missing crewmates after their ship crashes while they're out researching methods to save their own dimension from collapsing. This new dimension he's wound up in allows him to flip from ceiling to floor, which other than moving left to right are his only actions. Hopping across platforms and gaps must be done by flipping from the floor to the ceiling and then flipping back down again. It's not exactly thinking with portals, but it does make you think about how to get Viridian from one gap to the other in ways you didn't think of before. Challenge defines this game. Every room presents a slightly different method to get across it, be it flipping over moving enemies, using auto flip lines, to dodging a few spikes. It varies from room to room and level to level, and it keeps the game fresh and fun with all these different and new challenges. All sorts of things can kill the good captain, such as truth, lies, numbers, red triangles, hearts, and generally anything that moves or is shaped like a spike. One hit and Viridian has to go back to the last checkpoint he crossed. This is where the game is very forgiving. There's a checkpoint every few rooms, and every so often there is just one part or so that will get even the most seasoned of players. But with infinite lives, you'll eventually figure out how to get past the most difficult sections. In some ways, that's a good thing and a bad thing. It's good because it makes a very difficult game easy to keep playing without getting too frustrating, but bad because it almost completely removes any risk versus reward factors, unless you're hunting the 20 trinkets that unlock the ship's jukebox or extra game modes. After you save the crewman, you can enjoy some player-made levels or make your own in the easy-to-use level editor or pull off the impossible in the no-death mode or even flip mode, which is compatible with every other game mode. If you like retro, this is the game for you. Check it out on the PC and newly on the Nintendo 3DS. It's a flip-flopping good time. It's the letter V six times on the PC.